Well, in this part, we want to talk about a very important thing, which is family. Now, when you want to start working, you open a template in which, uh, for example, there are two families and types of door, right? When you continue, you're going to need more doors and windows, different types. What are you going to do? Well, uh, what comes to your mind is to download them, definitely. Or maybe uh, take it from some friends, right? But the question is that if you want a special kind of a door, what do you want to do? What should you do? Well, it means that we need to know how to create them ourselves. For example, the signs of elevation, the signs of the levels, which is circle by Revit. In some countries, it's not uh, a circle, it's a triangle, for example. How can we change these signs? Actually, we're going to have to customize Revit, right? We're going to be able to change everything Revit's got based on our own taste and the standards, right? Yes, that's right. Some things can be downloaded and loaded into our project and added, but the things that don't exist, the things that are too special, what should we do about them? We need to create them, right? So I also need to tell you that in the project, at least 30% of the times, uh, the, the things are professionals and you're going to have to create them. And if you're not good with this family and all that, you will definitely not be able to complete your project. In many countries, there is a job title called Family Maker, right? Actually, there's a company and that company has some people who create families. I mean, it can be such an important job and their, their salaries can be even more than some other people. Because they have, uh, they need to have more skills on these things. So this episode, we want to talk about all the things related to family and how to be able to customize your Revit. Create everything that does not exist in Revit or change everything that is in Revit. For example, you enter a company and they tell you that this is how our center line uh, sign is. Or, for example, someone says, this is how our section is. You're going to be able to change it, right? So you should be able to uh, change whatever you see in Revit and then add whatever you don't see in Revit. It's very important and we want to talk about it completely and perfectly. So let's see the categories. And then uh, we will go for creating it. Based on my explanations, the families are divided into two parts, right? So, families. Number one, 2D or two dimension, which are designed with line and then 3D, which are designed or created by model in place modeling in place so 2d and 3d the 2d's again are divided into two parts two groups the first one is annotation and the second one is profile now what are these well <coughs> you know annotation related to planning for example just like what i said like the sign of north or sign of level these are the signs uh the things that don't interfere with your model all right and they just are important while you're planning or you're preparing for being actually for printing those situations are really important. Profile, you know that. It's actually the level of the 3D objects, right? Let me tell you an example. For annotation, for example, like North, sign of the North, right? Level head, maybe. 
For example, now in Revit, the level heads are like this. They're circle, but in some countries, standards, uh, it's actually like that, like that. You need to know how to change this from that. If you cannot do that, you just need to work with the standards of a single country. Or, for example, grid head. It's like this. Well, you might say it's circle. It's all right. I say it's true. But if you want to change the size, what about that? And it's always necessary to know how to change the sizes of the uh, center lines. All the tags, for example, room tag or other tags, which we will talk about again. We've already mentioned them. Again, these work with the families. Next one is profile, like what? What object have we worked with so far that we needed to change the profile? And I said I will tell you later. For example, mullions. Do you remember? When we drew curtain walls, all the mullions were like this. Maybe your mullion wanted to be like that. So how did we have to change the profiles by family? What else? In the railings, rails, what else? Maybe in stair, the tread, which we will talk about perfectly, the riser and the nosing, the pro nosing profile, the tread profile and riser profile. All right, we will. Uh, actually, we can uh, design all these by families. Now, these are the 2D families which work with line. But what about 3D families? Well, what's the most useful one? That's right, doors and windows. What else? Columns and beams. The lamps. Furniture. Curtain wall panel, or maybe uh, the rail baluster, and many other things. And we will tell you some of them, and you will understand the subject. But the rest of the things we haven't mentioned, you will definitely be able to model yourselves. So, this uh, these are the categories of families. Now, let's draw an example for each of them. The first one is this. Imagine we've got a level head, we want to change it to such thing. Let's start from right here and designing the examples one by one. Well, the first example is about grids. For example, here we've got several grids. And we want to ch uh, design the head. <laughs> For example, this one. You might think that, well, these are all right. Why would we want to change? Why would, what would we want to design? Well, it's true. We, the grid heads are always circle and Revit's all right. But... If you go to this part and change this scale, for example, to 1.500. Uh, now, this is not something we want now. Maybe we need to make our grid heads smaller, right? So it's true, it's always circle, but sometimes for changing the size, we need to go for the family and design it. So, the first thing to do is uh, check... What the size is now. Right. Now, for example, you can go to this uh, measure and measure it. About 100, uh, 1,300. If you select it, you can see it here too. Now, the radius is 6.5 millimeters. It means that when it's printed, 
it's uh, one centimeter and three. Now, actually, it's uh, printed in this scale. It's printed one centimeter and three millimeters. So this is the size. Now, if you want to decrease it or increase it, you want to know the size. You want to know the current size. So I go and open the family, find a new family. Just remember that sometimes you make a mistake and instead of opening, uh, instead of going to new family, they go to open family and they open a family that has already been designed, right? So you go to new family. What we want to design now is from what category? That's right. Based on what I explained, it's for annotations. What are we going to design? Great head. I open it. Here is a text that is a, a kind of a guide to you. Here it says that you need to... Uh, actually, it says the intersection of ref planes. And finally, it says delist, delete this note and dummy line before using. This is a, a guide. You, these are dummies. You're going to have to delete them, right? So it's not that important even, right? They just usually say what zone you're going to have to design your family in. Well, now we want to design the shape of the grid head. Here we've got line. Even if you want some other shapes, you can obviously uh, use. But I usually uh, draw a circle. The root head is usually circle. The size, the dimension in our project right now, the radius was 6.5 millimeters, right? Which means the size was about one centimeter and three millimeters. Now, I want it to be smaller here. For example, four millimeters. I mean, the total would have to be eight millimeters. A very important point here is that when, while you're uh, drawing 2D, right, while you're drawing 2D families, you must draw it with a real dimension, with real size. I mean, if the head of this group, uh, you want this head to be 8 millimeters, you must draw it 8 millimeters too. Actually, 2D drawings and families are not scaled. I mean, in all the scales, uh, the dimension, the size is the same, right, it's constant. And the size you see here is exactly the same thing as uh, when it's printed. Now, when I click it and write the radius as 4, it means that uh, this size is 8. And in all these scales, it will be the same size, right? I emphasized on that because we're going to need that anytime we see we have 2D drawings, right well now this is eight centimeters eight millimeters let me say with level or for example grid had uh four millimeters that was 6.5 this is four let me save it and load it into the project Now, do they change? No, they, they don't. Many times, right? You think that when a family is built and then added to the project, here it must be changed. Now, uh, just something is added to the options that I showed. Now, for example, I want to change this. I selected, this is the type 6.5. Now, let's create a new type. So I duplicate it. It's bubble, but it's four millimeters. Now, what should I change? The symbol, that's right. A new type with a new symbol. Now, this is added. The, the size is different. This is the four millimeters type, and this is 6.5. Now, just like you see, something happened. The name of the grid is deleted. 
So we've got to go to the family and do something. Now, in order to be able to uh, do any kinds of editing on this family, you need to open the file. Now, this is open. And if it's not open, here I saved it. So I open it again. If it weren't open, I would open it again. So let's go to the file. In order to be able to have the name of the grid here, should we click text here? For example, should we use this option, write something? Not definitely, actually, no. Maybe you've guessed it yourself that if you do that, right, it will write the same thing in all the grids. So we've got something else called label, which the definition of it is it's a. Uh, uh, text which is changeable for showing and indicating the information of the object so click in the middle because uh, we've opened this template it actually recognizes it itself so we it just recognizes that it's just name now it's added so we're gonna have to uh, edit the sizes, the fonts and all that. Now you might say why it is so big. Let's make it smaller, but a question. Now, are we going to write name in the project so that I have to uh, change it based on this? So what is it going to be written here? The longest thing that is going to be written, for example, can be 99 or TT, right? The biggest the longest now because of that we have to change the sample of this label so edit label you see here is sample value it's not real it's sample it's just a guide so don't write name okay for example the longest possible thing qq by imagining uh, maybe sometime you're gonna have to write qq so now we make it small based on this QQ. So select it, go to the edit type. For example, text size. Now this is 4.5. Let's make it 3. I think that's great. Something else here. It, do you see this part is white? These, these labels have a background, right? Now, not to make actually uh, an interference with the... Uh, circle we can change this to transparent you see the background change it to transparent you see now you the horizontal align should also be center that if the size changes the align still remains now if you want you can change the font and all that well, let me save it <clears throat> and again load it into project. This is also for uh, closing the file after loading it. When you load a family, when you have loaded, loaded a family into a project and you want to load it again, you see this overwrite uh, message. It wants to edit the previous one actually which causes uh, to appear the information of this grid. Now, if you want, you can select these. If you open them, you can see this new type that we built. This episode was absolutely important and it will come in handy a lot. So I want you to build one and practice.